Let's get started with Chapter 1. What is Business Analytics? In defining Business Analytics, think about all the courses you have to take to get your BBA degree. You start with Information Systems, learning about computers and Excel. Then we add Statistics, where we gather, organize, and analyze data. You did some visualization in your first course where you made charts. In this course, we'll learn about building uh, dashboards. Then you go into models. We'll learn about how to predict outcomes, such as sales. Then you take operations research within the management area to learn about finding optimal routes to maximize profits, minimize cost, and other related areas you might take are in finance, where you learn about risk analysis. When we combine all of these different areas, we can talk about business analytics. What areas do we use analytics in? Security is probably one of the utmost important areas right now. We want to keep our Zoom meetings from being hacked into. Uh, we want to guard our private data. And then in companies, we want to make sure that our competitors can't find out our secrets. So all of these are done by making sure people aren't trying to guess passwords or breach a firewall. Within marketing, all three of the next things are important. Pricing, how much to charge, when to put it on sale at a discount, customer segmentation, figuring out our customer's age, where they live, what their income groups are, and then merchandising. What brand should we carry? How much should we stock? And where? how much should we display? Then in real estate, finding the greatest location is very important. Also, where do we put our warehouses to minimize the cost of distribution? Then social media plays an important role in us understanding our customers' perceptions, what they want, what they like, and to assist our marketing managers and product designers. This is a picture of the IBM building in Beijing. It's quite impressive. IBM started out uh, as the forerunner of business analytics by uh, coining the phrase business intelligence, or BI. In business intelligence, we gather, organize, and analyze data so that our executives and managers can make better decisions. Investing in analytics requires that we have employees that are trained to use the computers and the software programs such as Jump or SAS and Tableau or Python and understand the benefits versus the cost of all those products. Then our return on our investment is going to be improved productivity, higher profits, lower cost, and fewer risk that the business has to take. So what tools are needed? We need to understand how to use databases, how to do data mining, which is chapter two, uh, look at visualization programs such as Tableau, Python, Looker, uh, create dashboards and, and use geocoding to locate various things. Uh, we have statistical software such as Jump, SAS, and R. We can do simulations such as game theory. Sensitivity analysis, what if I add one more unit of this, how will it affect cost? And then optimization, we'll be learning a little bit about Solver in Excel in order to figure out what combination of, of goods or services would maximize profits or minimize our cost. A decision support system is something you'll learn more about when you take MIS 3305. It's a combination of business intelligence, 
and operations research models. We're going to create analytical computer systems. In operations research, you'll be combining both management techniques and statistics. So a decision support system is going to utilize data management, model management, and communication. I can't emphasize enough that it really helps to be a good oral and written communicator within a business. So what is big data? We've got 7.6 to 7.8 billion users per day on the internet. Amazon generates 1 million transactions per hour. This requires special computers to store, organize, and model the data in real time, like right now. We want future employees uh, to have critical thinking skills. So we're going to try to build some of those within this course. Where do we get our data? Company reports, obviously, from annual reports and quarterly reports. Our customer records, finding out about their age, their income. Uh, we can go to the BLS.gov. That's the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. They have a magnificent website with all kinds of data and uh, written observations that they've uh, taken the data and actually massaged it. We have financial and economic analyses to do. Uh, we have marketing research, operations reports, human resource findings, and then tracking what's going on on our social media and websites. There are three types of business analytics that we'll study in the course. Descriptive, you did a little bit of in QBA 2302, where you built histograms and bar charts, pie charts, uh, polygons and ogives, or you just described the data with means and standard deviations. In predictive analysis, we'll do a lot of this in the course. We'll build mathematical models like fuel equals 22.5 plus 15.4 times the number of automobiles on the highway. Uh, prescriptive is going to use algorithms uh, to optimize our resources. And we'll look at different combinations of products, people, and time in order to maximize or minimize different items. So here's some examples of analytics in action. What if we were seeing ski retail outlets and we wanted to figure out where we should set swimsuit prices and when we should lower those uh, in order to maximize our profits? So in using analytics, the descriptive part would be charting our historical sales for swimsuits over time and noting when sales begin for swimsuits, when they peak and when they start to decline. Then within our predictive program, we can use time again as a variable to predict sales at different periods. And then prescriptive analytics would find the best set of pricing and advertising to maximize our sales revenue. In all of our statistics, we're using metrics. They're simply measurements to quantify performance. So metrics can be used to tell us how machines are operating in a manufacturing process, what our worker productivity levels are, and our profit margins. Businesses want to measure these and track them constantly to see where they need improvement. Different types of metrics include discrete measures, which are finite in nature. A lot of times we call this count data, things that are whole numbers, like the number of people waiting in line, number of items in inventory, versus continuous metrics, 
are theoretically infinite. So anything I could measure more and more accurately, such as height, weight, distance, time, or money, those were items we put on those continuous type charts like in a normal distribution. Scales of measurement may be important when we get into our programs such as JUMP and we need to identify, do I have a nominal or ordinal variable, or is it continuous in nature? So let's break down what these measurements are. Nominal data is merely categorical. The numbers just represent a category, such as jersey numbers represent a player, part numbers, customer ID numbers then ordinal data will identify and rank the data. So anytime you list your brand preferences in a survey, the number one item is your favorite, then your second, and then your third. Interval data will have no absolute zero point, but it will have uh, consistent distances between the values. So Fahrenheit degrees, At, in Fahrenheit, the zero point does not represent freezing. Therefore, it is not what we consider ratio data. But in Celsius degrees, zero is freezing. It has an absolute zero point. Therefore, we call that ratio data. Validity and veracity. Validity means that your instrument measures what it's supposed to measure. So a clock tells time. Data has veracity, or what we'll call reliability, when it's accurate and consistent. So if your time is correct, it has reliability. Data can be valid, but not reliable, such as when the clock in my car is always three minutes late. Even when I reset it, the next time I get in it, it's three minutes late. The ratings can be misleading online because other factors outside a business's service may influence your experience, and therefore it may not be reliable. So you go out with your friends and you have a really good time and give a high rating to a restaurant for its service, when in fact you may not have had good service at all. IBM coined the four V's. Volume refers to big data. In the future, we may have computers that hold yottabytes of data. That would be a thousand to the eighth power in bytes. The variety of data is numerical, text, audio, and video currently. Our velocity refers to the speed. We constantly seek faster and faster transfer speeds. And then veracity again is how reliable is our data. Another V that we could add in there is viability. Is it measuring what it's supposed to measure? When we model business problems, we'll have an abstraction or representation of a real system, idea, or object. There are three types of models, written or verbal, visual, and mathematical. We're going to use digital circuits as a, an example in a lot of the problems in the book. This is a company that sells uh, like Best Buy items online only. And so if we had to try to talk about how sales this year are affected by the number of purchases from last year, our written description would simply be that. Sales tended to increase as the number of purchases increased it from last year. A visual description may be a scatter plot, like you see on the right here. You'll notice there is a funny line at the zero 
point of the y-axis. That's because some of those customers didn't purchase anything last year, but they have this year. And then finally, our mathematical model is shown under linear fit, where we can predict sales by taking 682.66 plus 0.7436 times the number of purchases last year. Decision models are logical mathematical models that aid a business or executives and managers in making better decisions. Our inputs include data and then uncontrollable variables or quantities that can vary that we couldn't know exact amounts of beforehand. And decision variables are going to be controllable variables that the analyst could know. Digital circuits is going to have a decision model based on these variables. The gender of the customer, their age, their income, the number of children, their purchases made last year in dollars, and the sales from this year. Our predictive model is going to try to predict sales. So you see here we come up with that model of 96.02 plus 16.99 times gender plus 4.846 times age plus 0.0188 times income minus 406.41 times number of children plus 0.2895 times purchases last year. So if we put in values, so gender is a nominal variable. We'll code it with a zero or a one, and we'll have to have a legend explaining was a zero a male or a female. Then we'll put in a customer's age, their income, how many children that customer had, and the amount of dollar purchases from last year. When we analyze models, like in Chapter 3, we'll look at several different models and determine whether they meet certain assumptions. For instance, we don't want any bad outliers or anomalies in the data. And we want all of the variables that are included to actually be good predictors. So the better the analyst, the better the model will predict our variables. The analyst must always apply human logic and a bit of intuition to every model before making any predictions. This is a quote from West Point cadets. Uh, their maxim or their, their code is that you should risk more than others think is safe, care more than others think is wise, dream more than others think is practical, expect more than others think is possible. So when we talk about risk in business, we want to try to reduce those. We can never completely eliminate risk, but there are things we can do using probability in order to minimize our risk. In the area of prescriptive analytics, the key terms to look for are the words optimizing or maximizing or minimizing. All of those are part of prescriptive analysis. We may have deterministic models where we know all the values that are going in or stochastic models where some of the variables are unknown or uncertain. In digital circuits, if they knew their customer's average income was 60000 per year, our model was solely based on an income, it would be deterministic. But if the company just knew that our customer's income varied between fifty-five dollars and $75,000, it would be a stochastic model. So as we conclude Chapter 1, when you take data analytics and data mining and systems analysis, you'll 
discovered there's a common thread that we want to go through these processes each time. First, we need to recognize what the problem is. Our sales are lower than the national average. Then we want to understand the business and the data. That takes more time for outside consultants to do than for someone who's already within the company who knows the company's culture, their goals and objectives. Then we take that data that's been gathered and organized and we build models. Then we evaluate them. We want to make sure we've met all our assumptions. There are no bad outliers in there. That we've got a normal distribution. Then we interpret our results. We want to make sure we're good at explaining to whoever is going to use the model in what we found with our data. And finally, we'll implement solutions based on those outcomes. So once you see how this is all put together, it becomes easier to take a business problem and break it down and get some useful information out of data. That's our goal.